guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Jaguar Clearwater, and we have another Jaguar to showcase for you to fit many different lifestyles. This is a 2020 Jaguar E-Pace. This is gonna be their crossover, smaller crossover SUV, but let's talk about Jaguar history before we even get to this E-Pace. Jaguar's been around for a little over 85 years, if you could believe that. So many iconic models, the XK120, the D-Type Jags, the E-Type Jags, XJR 220s, I mean, the list goes on and on. Even two wins at the coveted 24 Hours Le Mans. Now in the 21st century, Jaguar understands that people have a demand for SUVs, crossover SUVs, compact SUVs, and everything else. And that's where the E-Pace falls into their lineup. Below the F-Pace, it's a smaller SUV. They're basically saying that this is an uh, F-Type turned into an SUV. Let's go ahead though, check out the E-Pace and see if it's the right crossover for you. Right off the bat, I love the styling. Even the headlight design, it looks like a cat. Looks like cat eyes. It's definitely the cat's meow with full LED. I like the silver trim dividing the two levels you have. What's becoming a brand recognizable J-Hook daytime running lamp. We drop down, we have some flat black. This is all functional right here in this area. Side air curtain works great with the red. This lower guy right here on both corners, that's a zonk. These are non-functional. I wish they would have just left it out. As we come across the front, that sloping hood design into the front fascia has a great recognizable brand Jaguar known with that whole design. Oval shaped on the grill, flat black, flat black. Everything's consistent. I like the Jaguar screaming at you, about to just bite you right in the ribs. Little bit of red there, silver chrome around the whole perimeter of that grill. The one thing that's kind of seems out of place is this flat silver down here. That seems to be like the go-to color to make a crossover utility vehicle or an SUV look off-roadish or something. So a little bit of silver, but from one side to the other definitely screams Jaguar. Now when we get up onto the hood, I do like what Jag does. Very simple body lines, but it gives a nice raised midsection to the hood of the Jaguar. We come around, what do we see? We see a little bit of flat black. So they took some of the flat black here, went all the way around the fender, and then these wheels are gorgeous. 20 inch wheel, gloss black, 10 spoke, even brought the red from the front badging with that Jaguar screaming at you. And I think the way that this sits with the red, it fits it to a T. Now, when we go into the fender, you do have some fake vent here. So I am gonna zonk this, but I do like the silver trim with the Jaguar name embossed there. I think without this, the fender would look way too bland. I just wish they wouldn't have put a fake vent, just left it silver. You can see the height of the roof of this uh, E-Pace. I'm six feet tall and where that is, they have color match mirror caps, little bit of gloss black. I like the way that they smoke out the turn singles, which is a nice touch. And then they take that flat black and run it all the way along the bottom, which is gonna help take a better beating. This one has all wheel drive, so you could go down a trail road with this um, E-Pace. Gloss black, everything is flat all the way around. I think it fits it perfectly. You have your belt line kind of brings back, rises up, it actually stops, and then it rises here into a nice flared fender look. Very, very triangular um, rear quarter window. And then when we get to the tail end of the business, definitely Jag. Low roof spoiler, there's that iconic, I actually love this logo a lot more than the logo on the front. Reminds me of the old hood ornaments as a kid. I wanted one uh, to have in my room. Jaguar. This one is the P250, like I said, with all-wheel drive. You can get a P300, which has more performance. Low rear diffuser area, I'm zonking this fake vent. These are decorative. The exhaust is actually inside, so I'm only gonna half zonk it, um, but I wish they would not have done this fake vent. I do like, though, this split-level rear diffuser area, and I'm glad that they brought some more silver, that flat silver from the front I showed you. They brought it to the rear makes it a little bit more cohesive. Stylish badging on the E-Pace. But why don't we go ahead, we talked about the rear of this thing, let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what's powering this Jaguar E-Pace. All right guys, we got the hood popped on the Jaguar E-Pace. I'm zonking it, first of all, from a mechanic standpoint, this 
engine compartment is ultra tight. The plastic engine cover is a, is a little bland, so we're also gonna zonk that as well. But what you're looking at in that cramped area is a two liter inline four turbocharged engine, 246 horsepower, 269 pound-feet of torque. It's all made it through a ZF nine speed automatic transmission. Like I said, this one has all wheel drive, so the weight is around 4,100 pounds, zero to 60 in about 6.6 .6 seconds, MPGs, 21 in the city and 28 on the highway. I, I would think my biggest complaint on this is just how cramped that engine is. I definitely would not want to be a service technician having to work on one of these. But why don't we go ahead, fire up the Z-Pace and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're in the 2020 E-Pace. I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, this crossover vehicle kind of has me surprised. What is the MSRP? The way that this one is optioned, you're looking at around $46,300. Let's see what you get for the money. Now, to the door panels, very nice material. It's all soft. The only problem is it's all dark material. I wish they would have taken some of that um, brushed aluminum finish that they have there and kind of spread it a little bit more on the door panel. You do have a large pocket at the bottom where you could fit tons of Twinkies and some drinks down there just for the passenger, let alone also on the driver's side. Now, Dash has a nice unique slope design. I do like the softness, the stitch work. There's more of that brushed aluminum trim I was telling you about. And then if, when we get to the center stack, they carry the rest of the silver. This is a 10 inch infotainment system. Uh, screen. You have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, navigation. There's the graphics on that. You have the ability to just access that rear view camera. A little uh, sluggish getting the rear view camera. Start, stop button conveniently placed. My only zonk is this, this flat black plastic. It's very rental car-ish in here and it really does not feel like Jaguar for sure. We drop down. You do have dual climate control. Nice knobs. They have a good click to them. You can push them on and off. There's your blower uh, speed. Um, but definitely, I like the look of the LED graphics. You do have a large cubby down here, perfect for uh, those king size M&M bags of M&Ms, peanut M&Ms and whatnot. A 12 volt, but new, no USB up there. So that to me is a zonk. They give you this oh crap handle, which I don't know where you're gonna be driving this E-Pace to where you're gonna crap yourself, but it could be used for the driver or the passenger, which is a nice touch. This is gonna control that nine speed, ZF nine speed automatic transmission. I do like the brushed aluminum around the base. And I also like this sliding toggle switch. This is gonna put you in the modes of dynamic, comfort, those different options, snow, gravel for the all wheel drive. It changes the parameters of the engine, the steering, the throttle, two cup holders. And then here is your Jaguar key fob. It's a little on the large side, but it has a nice heft to it. Flip it around, there's your buttons. This armrest is as hard as a British rock. Open it up, you have plenty of room. If you stack up your Twinkies, like stand them up vertical, you could fit about 16 of them in there. Two USBs and another 12 volt. So the, one of these USBs should be up here. That would make a lot more sense. Close it up, seats, soft material, nice leather material. I like the stitching. Um, the challenge is, is that they're not heated or ventilated. So. That to me is, is a really um, big issue with this setup in here. Another challenge is no sunroof. And the problem with that is that it's very dark in here. So I wish that they, at least for $46,000, just give you a small sunroof. It'd be nice, of course, you could option a, a panoramic, which you may want because of all the dark material. But I'm six feet tall. I do have plenty of headroom, that is for sure. But why don't you come on over to the business side? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this E-Pace. All right, guys, business end, no memory settings for the driver's seat, so that's another zonk. Here are your controls to control the electric assist movement of the seat. I do like this silver aluminum trim down here with the Jaguar logo. Steering wheel, it's bland. It really is. Um, it, the leather doesn't feel really like leather, to be honest with you. I do like the Jaguar sitting there. The rest of it is very, very boring steering wheel. Gauges though, very tasteful. I like the analog speedometer tack and that info display in the center. You could toggle through 
all sorts of different information in that center stack to allow you to kind of be able to see all the different parameters and whatnot. Let me go ahead and also show you how you could change the driving modes. There's comfort, eco, and like I said, that rain, ice, and snow uh, setup is very nicely done as well. Other than that, it's comfortable. I just, I don't know if I'm in love with it. Let's see if your passengers are gonna be in love with the Z-Pace. All right, guys, back seat time. The good news is getting in and out was easy for somebody as tall as I am, and I have plenty of headroom. I mean, headroom is tons to be had. Backs of the seats are a little lacking. You do have that plastic on the back. I, these cargo nets, I gotta go, because I could, I could just imagine a kid ripping through this so easily, so I'm zonking that. You do have two rear AC and a 12 volt, but no USB. You do though have a tray they thought through for uh, Tootsie Rolls, so that was smart of them. See, I don't know, I, I don't like the angle of it, the way that I'm sitting, um, but let's see how the armrest is. That's always a big mystery. I like it, it's at a good height, it's a little hard, and then this opens up and you could actually just dump your bag of peanuts right in there, because this is plastic, it's not felt line, and there's no USB in there, that's for sure. But it's at a good height, your two cup holders, smack it back, Let's go ahead and check out that cargo area and see what we can fit in the e -base. All right, guys, time to check out the rear cargo area. We push the button. You're gonna have to lift it yourself like we used to back when I was a kid. In the back, you do have a good amount of space. If you're wondering, well, what are the hard numbers? You're looking at 24 cubic feet with the seats up. Fold the seats down, you're looking at 53 cubic feet of space. That is pretty good for a vehicle this size. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. You do have a 12 volt, which is great. If you're going camping, if you're going uh, tailgating, there is your spare tire conveniently placed right there. And then, like I said, those seats, and I'll go ahead and do it just to prove a point, are gonna do the 60-40 split. So they don't flat, they're not totally flat, but at least that really opens up the area. You have a little bit of a elastic strap here where you could actually um, have your bag of lays back there so it's not sliding around which makes sense but why don't we go ahead let's take this jaguar e-pace for a spin all right guys we left jaguar clearwater we're in the 2020 e-pace what i do like right off the bat is the visibility out the front windshield uh, they did a great job pulling the a pillars very far wide apart to really opens up the view the steering wheel, I'm still not sold on it. Every time I look at it, I, I, I wanna look away immediately. Um, same thing with that flat black plastic around the infotainment system. The screen is very nice and large and the navigation, um, when you have it up, is, is super clear and easy to see. The better news is that I was concerned about how angled the rear glass was on the hatch. It, it actually works really well in here. Um, and you have a, a, a really great view. Side mirrors are large enough to where you're also be, you're able to see who's beside you. Um, the feedback to the wheel is better than, than what it looks. And of course, with the all-wheel drive, you're definitely gonna feel planted in this E-Pace. Acceleration test on throttle, no loss of traction, shifts are smooth on the brakes, into this right-hand bend. Crisp turning, very, very crisp, fast turning, so that definitely is a plus. The engine is very, very buzzy, though. There's a very loud scream coming from that turbocharged inline four. The steering feedback, though, was great. Pedal feedback on the brakes were great as well, and there wasn't a bunch of body roll, which is, is nice to see, uh, even though this vehicle is obviously a little lifted compared to a sedan or what people in England like to call a saloon car. Seats are a little on the firm side, but I think that as you drive this E-Pace, they get a little bit more comfy. It's, it's interesting. It's like a, a firmness to them, but they're still supportive and comfy um, to where you'd be able to drive this on a long distance every day and not have um, any issues, to be honest with you. The gauges are very, very crisp and easy to understand. Um, especially the analog part to them. And other than that, I mean, it's a very, very overall capable vehicle, 
with the all-wheel drive. Definitely in dynamic mode, you're gonna feel the difference in the way that the transmission shifts, that ZF9 speed automatic transmission shifts. Um, but the shifts are very, very smooth. In dynamic, it's a little bit more deliberate of a shift. Uh, but other than that, very nicely done from ZF who makes some great transmissions. As you can see, getting on the highway here, very smooth ride, very compliant ride. There's a little bit of wind noise that's kind of bothering me, especially on a Jaguar that costs $46,000. Um, but other than that, the, the vehicle rides very nicely. The great news is a lot of this flat black that I was zonking because it was a little bit like a rental car, it has no glare as you're driving, which is which is very nice. You don't have to worry about glare from the sun and whatnot. But overall, I think that, hey, if somebody is looking for a crossover utility vehicle that has a little bit extra sport to it and wants that Jaguar name, now Jaguar's got you covered with the E-Pace. Uh, but overall, getting to all the controls, easy to do, the touch screen, the AC controls, uh, I just wish that the USB uh, USB uh, jack was up front rather than everything under the armrest. But hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of the E-Pace. We're going to wrap this one up and get back to Jaguar Clearwater. So I will see you in a split second. All right, guys. Another great day here at Jaguar Clearwater. I definitely got to thank uh, Phil and Chris and the rest of the crew getting us access to these 2020 Jaguars. Is it the perfect crossover? No, but... It is smart of Jaguar to have this in their lineup for people who do not want to go any larger with their SUV. But if it's vehicles like these you want to keep seeing on the channel, leave a comment in the comment section. If you are new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee, Tom Moshner. You know what? He's scratching his head about this Jaguar, and I totally know why. Thank you, Tom, for all your hard work, and just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.